Question 11 is asking for two benefits of computer modeling. Well, what are they talking about? For example, computer modeling could be making projections. We've tracked the data up to this point. Let's project where it could go next. Um, it could say if one thing is correlated with another. Here's a, there's a great website called Spurious, Spurious Correlations, and it'll find the most unlikely and kind of funny correlations between things, between things you never thought were correlated. And that's to point out the very important fact that a correlation does not mean cause. So just because the number of um, spiders and spelling bee um, letters are kind of related, well, they go up and they go down together. I mean, if you go a little bit further or a little bit before this, they probably had no relation to each other. And also those scales are adjusted. Um, so yeah, like locally, they seem to line up briefly, but then, you know, lots of things happen eventually if you look through enough data. So, um, what about making decisions? Um, a classic one is that, um, oh, we're, the world is in dire straits because there is, the population is going to skyrocket and we're going to have 200 billion people. Uh, but actually a lot of projections say that once you're middle-aged, middle-aged, no, that's not right. <laughs> middle income once you're middle class we'll say and um, like a lot of people in in china india in developing countries are increasingly becoming more i would say boring you know they're not having 12 kids anymore the days of um losing a few kids to uh wild animals so you better have 12 they've got they've gone uh it takes about two generations to go to kick in but you know uh like my dad has what 12 brothers and two sisters something like that like a lot and that's just drawn like in the 1950s so um yeah, it's you can see from this uh, kind of projection here, you can be like, hey, we don't need to worry about this so much because actually it's going up, but it's coming down. Once everyone in, in, in China gets a, a nice house, a car, 2.5 children, then yeah, they're kind of fine. They don't really need to have a, a gazillion, gazillion kids. And actually in Japan, the population is going down. In a lot of actually Western countries, it's more it's now the opposite problem. So um, who's going to pay for all of the old people? Uh, so yeah, anyway, but that allows you to make decisions with a, with a model. Um, here's a really interesting decision you should make. Let's stop eating, uh, stop, stop eating so much beef. Like, are you really going to drive the CO2 levels up? Like a lot of the classrooms, they're, they're green and green is up to, you know, it's somewhere between 400 and whatever. Uh, but uh, like the IPCC worst projection, it's not great projection, but also not totally crazy, is that, you know, in by 2100, every CO2 monitor in those classrooms will be in the red just just normally. You know, you would have to close all the windows in your classroom to keep the CO2 out. And you have to then have like you'd have to have some kind of filter like an Apollo above 13 to filter out all the CO2. Um I mean, I know, but like, I, I feel like I'm like getting lethargic and headachy and stuffy with that amount of CO2 in the room. And that's just going to be outside is going to be like the stuffiest room inside. Ugh, man, that's just like, I don't think. Look, I love I love mints. I love my lasagnas, but I just don't think this is worth it. You know, uh, you should have a go. Actually, the little fake burgers are flipping delicious. Um, anyway, uh, other ones, not so much, but the little ones top notch. Um, another great um, thing to talk about here, a reason you might use simulations or models um, is because some things are surprisingly hard. Um, rocket science sending a satellites around the moon is surprisingly simple mathematically. I mean, the plumbing is a nightmare with redirecting an explosion down a tube and around a bend. But the maths isn't actually not as bad as like what's worse than that is balancing a pencil on your finger because I mean, if someone opens a window over there, that could change the record. Because you're, you're basically dealing with a fluid. Anything to do with fluids. <laughs> but maths, scary, scary maths. So, um, yeah. So what you do instead is you just put a finger out. You put a pencil on it. And you do you just drop it 100 times. Count how many times it went left. Count how many times it went right. And like it may not be a general solution for all fingers. But it will certainly predict your finger. And that's fine. I mean, sometimes that's all you want to do. And here's a little import um, random Python program that uh, with two possible outcomes that will generate a random choice between left and right. And uh, it'll weight it 44, 56%. That's what we did. So it's, it's easy to simulate this with not a lot of maths.
It's called the Monte Carlo method. And it was actually used to calculate the cross section of a neutron way, 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 way back in the 1940s. Um, it was a, a sneaky side project um, when they were they were working on the atomic bomb. And basically, uh, this guy, Stanis Manis, was thinking about playing solitaire. And he was like, what are the odds that solitaire just kind of like works out by itself if I just close my eyes and let it go? And he was like, well, I could kind of think about a weird maths way of doing it or I could just play 100 games in a row and just count how many out of 100 and that's the answer and then he was like wait a second I've got a big computer called the ENIAC that can well I will that that can uh they can do the kind of the same thing and again and again and again it's what computers do and still do very well um repeated things so yeah he did that and he figured out the uh, cross-section kind of just about thereabouts and it was super accurate actually um and so the code word the code name for this secret project because they wanted to hide it from the russians was monte carlo because his uncle lost all his money in a casino and because you know came from the solitaire thought um and von neumann worked with that um and the reason i'm whacking up this stuff is because you could be asked a question in the leaving cert i'm not trying to torture you with text you could be asked a question about leaving cert about who is john uh, von Neumann and his contributions and um, if you're asked about the development of computers there's a question the ENIAC computer it can do anything at the time in 1945 but it was the first actual like electronic digital computer um, and was pretty snazzy they actually ended up using it for uh, to calculate where artillery shells could land in an artillery shell table um, so not like a super good civilian use, but still later on, it did lead to the computer that I'm using right now. So let's look at the marking scheme here. It's saying to test the feasibility, we said that, uh, of, of different ideas. To make predictions, we're talking about that as well, of emergent behavior. I mean, look, that's a little bit wordy there at the, at the bottom, but um, I mean, making decisions, definitely underline that. That's something that modeling and simulations can help you with, making future decisions. And uh, we, the last one there is where it says enable solutions to problems that are just really difficult to solve. Thank you, Monte Carlo method. That seems to work. Explain how agent-based modeling may have been used during the COVID-19 pandemic to influence public health policy. Thank you, Nen Nenfit, Enfit, um, and all that jazz. So what do they do? And did they use agent-based modeling to do it? Uh, I don't know if they did, but well, we'll talk about Firstly, what what it is. So agent-based modeling is when you have uh, a bunch of little dudes that simulate stuff, okay? Before we had a graph, and the graph kind of extended into projection. That's more of an analytical model. It's kind of the slope, you know, coordinate geometry and algebra, and it's saying this is the slope of the line and it's going this direction. But little dudes, you can just program little, like, imaginary robots to bump off each other and spread viruses into each other. And, uh, yeah, so it's these are autonomous agents. Please do not write little dudes in an exam. Um, so you can do that to understand the behavior in a system. And you can give them give them different behaviors. Um, like you can give them, I, I, I move really fast. I go really slow. Uh, I spread stuff a lot. Um, you can see here on the right, there's an agent-based model of little uh, things um, moving around. Um, who knows what it is? <laughs> it doesn't, you know. But uh, all of those little guys have pre-programmed behaviors. Uh, it could be for coronavirus. And uh, this is something that's interesting as well. Like, like it, that agent could represent a school or a district or a country. Do you know what I mean? Like, so agent-based models don't have to be individuals. Um, but they have attributes and they have pre-programmed behaviors that you can adjust with, like, um, little levers that go up and down. So... Mark and Scheme is saying that agent-based modeling, ABM, uh, could have behavioral rules. That's what we said. You uh, have a little rule for each dude. Um, and an individual profile for each agent. Maybe it's his health, his armor class, his stats, and how many magic swords he's got. But in this case, it's probably not, unless it's fantasy COVID. Um, it's probably like something like age, range, gender, like demograph, and wherever he lives, you know. Um, and the second point there, it can be used to predict outcomes for different scenarios. School scenarios, bus scenarios, airplane scenarios. Um, looking at the market scheme, there's a lot, and it's quite, I would say, very eloquently put here. But you don't have to be talk like uh, Richard Dawkins or Christopher Hitchens to to kind of come out with this in the exam. Especially if you've just mentioned here that you, it's making decisions um, uh, in in different scenarios using those agents. You know, um, like 
and it's saying here like crowd controls indoor outdoor foreign travel airplanes name whatever you like your scenario um and you're changing the behaviors and, and that sort of thing so that's agent-based modeling little dudes